Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kendra and in this video I am reacting to your unpopular knitting opinions. Is this camera crooked? So recently Tony Lipsy of Tail Yarn Crafts did a video very similar to this where she filled it her audience for to submit their unpopular knitting opinions or crafting or crochet opinions and she did a video sharing them and reacting to them um, with her mother and that was really fun and this is not a new concept i've seen several people that i subscribe to do similar videos to this and i'm not normally one to hop on a bandwagon but in this particular case i thought it would be fun to make one of these videos so a couple of weeks ago i put a story on Instagram asking my followers to submit their unpopular knitting opinions or controversial knitting opinions. And in this video, I'm going to share them and react to them. The first one I have here is that tying knots is completely fine. I agree that tying knots is fine for you, but I personally do not tie knots. I like to weave my ends in properly or spit splice when I join in a new ball of yarn. So I cannot say that I agree with this opinion for myself, but to each their own. La Biana May's confetti yarn is overrated. It's scratchy and itchy and not worth the money. Personally, I have never tried La Biana May's yarn, any of it, including Cori confetti, so I don't have an opinion on that yarn in particular. I personally think the value in hand dye yarn, any hand dye yarn, is the direct labor that goes into dyeing the yarn and the unique colorways that come out of the hand dyeing process. A fiber is a fiber and not every fiber blend is going to be for everyone and I don't think the softness of a yarn really equates to a quality of a yarn. I'm inclined to say that La Bienna May is, isn't overrated. It's just hand dyed, so it's gonna be pricier. I don't have an explicit opinion on that yarn, but that, that's my two cents. Knitting shawls and socks sounds horrible. I don't agree with that. I'm not personally inclined to knit shawls. I'm not much of a shawl knitter. I think I've knit one and I never wore it. So yeah, I'm pretty convinced that shawls are not for me. However, I am a really enthusiastic sock knitter. I always like to have a sock project on the go and um, they're okay in terms of the knitting experience, but my enjoyment really comes out of being able to wear hand knit socks. I find them so comfortable, far more comfortable than any store-bought sock that I've ever owned. So. I don't agree with this opinion that it sounds horrible. I don't have such strong <laughs> thoughts on shawls in particular. I don't think knitting shawls sounds horrible. I just am not particularly interested in it. And for socks, I strongly disagree. I think socks are awesome, hand knit socks are awesome, and I am an enthusiastic sock knitter, so. French tuck makes me irrationally angry. This makes me laugh. I cannot say that French tuck makes me irrationally angry, but I do not do it. There are a couple of tops where I can pull it off with, but it's just fussy for no reason. Every time you go to the bathroom, you have to readjust the French tuck and there's not a hundred percent guarantee that it's going to look how it looked when you first did it and it could come untucked. It's just, I feel like I'm always going to be for the low fuss outfit option and a French tuck is, in my opinion, not very low fuss. So in general, I'm not interested in the French tuck and I feel like people overuse it. I have seen people get scrunchies and sort of bunch up their sweater and tie it on the inside. If, for example, they are pairing their sweater with a dress and there is no waistband to French tuck into, they will go out of their way to French tuck something. I find that kind of ridiculous. But again, it doesn't make me irrationally angry. It just makes me go, hmm, that seems stupid. And then I move on with my life. But I understand where you're coming from. Sometimes I don't mind free yarn as payment for a collab. And I agree with that. I think this is specific to 
why you're here. Like I'm here because I enjoy it. I enjoy knitting. I enjoy talking about my knitting. I enjoy creating videos, talking about my knitting. And so that's why I'm here. I'm not here to start a business to support my lifestyle financially. I am not here to sell anything or get any profit. That's just not why I'm here. So for me, it doesn't make sense for me to get money out of these collabs when that's just not why I'm here. But for someone, for example, who is an indie designer or some type of yarn influencer and their intent on the platform is to derive an income to support their lifestyle. They have a household to maintain, mouths to feed. I totally get it. You cannot pay the rent with yarn or free merchandise. So to each their own, but for me, paying me in yarn is perfectly fine. But in general, after having done a couple of collabs myself, I'm just not interested in collabs at all, really. It makes me feel like this is work. And it is work, but it, it makes me feel like I'm on the clock, like I'm doing this for someone else and not for myself. And it, in my experience, takes the enjoyment out of it altogether. So after the couple of collabs that I've done, I have pretty much decided that I'm not going to be doing that anymore. And that's just kind of my opinion on it. So in short, I do agree with this opinion. Center pool yarn cakes, skeins, etc., are the worst. I refuse to engage in this yarn barf nightmare. I'm pretty sure my friend Halima submitted this question, if I recall correctly, and I wholeheartedly, enthusiastically agree with this opinion. Center pool, just no. Just no. When the yarn ball collapses and you get the uh, just no, just no. And that's that on that. I don't care how soft it is. Acrylic really is crap. I don't agree with this. I don't have such a strong opinion about acrylic in most cases, specifically for garments or anything that I'm going to be wearing. I steer clear of acrylic. It's just not my preferred fiber to wear on my body. But for example, if I'm making a crochet baby blanket that is that needs to be machine washable and really durable, I will gravitate towards acrylic versus other fibers. So I think it all comes down to the application. What are you going to be making? What are you going to be using it for? Who is it going to be for? That should all play a factor in the fiber that you decide to use. But to say a blanket statement that acrylic is crap, I just simply don't agree. I'll use up yarn from a controversial yarn brand if I bought it already, because that is money already spent. Yeah, if I spent money on it and if it's a product that I enjoy and I like, then I'm going to use it, period. Hand sewn bind offs do, in fact, make a difference on ribbing. Sure. Yeah, I agree with that. I think hand sewn bind offs like the Italian sewn bind off and the tubular bind off, I think provide a really clean finish. They're really stretchy. They and I think they're superior to other bind offs that don't visually look as neat. More often than not, I find it worth going through the extra labor of doing a sewn bind off. So yes, I agree with that. Short row shaping is unnecessary. I agree with this, but I also don't agree with this. I agree with it in the sense that nothing is necessary. Literally none of this is necessary. But I disagree if we are talking about making a sweater that fits, that doesn't ride up in the front, that is comfortable, that doesn't bunch up at the back all of the above, short row shaping is 100% going to be the solution to those problems. If you want a garment that fits well around the neck and falls the way you want it to, then short rows are gonna help you achieve that. And in that regard, I do think they are necessary to do so to each their own. I am an advocate for short rows. Weaving in ends isn't that bad. I agree. It's just a means to an end. It's a natural step in the process. You just kind of do it and move on with life. People in the media mixing up knitting and crochet are fine. Literally, who cares? 
I agree. Who cares, girl? I think people are too easily offended. And if somebody calls your knitting crochet, whether in real life or on TV, respectfully correct them if you feel so inclined and then move on with your life. Not You can't expect everybody to care about your thing as much as you care about your thing. That's just not how reality works. I wish there were more patterns that combined knitting and crochet skills. I disagree with this. I personally don't have a desire to make any projects that incorporate both knitting and crochet, and I haven't seen any. I've seen a few, but none of them really stand out to me as something I personally want to make. And this is coming from someone who knits and crochets. I just don't have any desire to combine the two crafts. Lots of hand-painted yarns look better in skeins than they do knitted up. I agree with this. Hand-dyed yarn is beautiful to look at in the skein, but most of the hand-dyed pieces that I see knit up, particularly for garments, just don't do anything for me, especially variegated. Sorry, girl. People need to stop knitting from big pattern designers unless they're size inclusive. I disagree with this. I think it's a free market. Designers can design what they want. Knitters can knit what they want and everybody can just live their life. Yeah, to say that people need to stop knitting from certain designers unless they are size inclusive. Like why are we trying to police what other people do? But yeah, I disagree with this one. I refuse to buy anything like storage units from Ikea, the fast fashion of furniture. That's fair, that's fair. I have made a concerted effort to reduce my Ikea shopping. And when it comes to furniture, seeking out pieces that are more quality made that I don't have to build. And that's a big one. So I get the not buying from Ikea because that's personally something that I try to do, but I wouldn't say that I flat out refuse. So I guess I partially agree with this one. Color does not have gender. Stop making pink, blue baby stuff. I agree. Well, color doesn't inherently have gender, I agree, but as a society, we have collectively sort of made the association of blue for boys and pink for girls. And by we, I mean society at large, historically. But I think people are kind of turning away from the blue for boys, pink for girls dynamic and branching out in terms of color. And I would agree um, that color doesn't have a gender. Um, but the part where it says stop making pink, blue baby stuff. No, people can make whatever they want for whoever they want. I enjoy knitting for other people. Interesting. You know, I maybe two years ago would have disagreed with this. But as I become more of an experienced knitter and I sort of begin to realize that I have my whole life ahead of me and I have a finite amount of space to store my hand knits, logistically speaking, not everything I knit for until the end of time can be for me. I just don't have the capacity. So just Logically, it makes sense to kind of diversify and for some of the stuff that I make to be for other people. But outside of that, I have come to really enjoy making gifts for other people, certain other people, like my husband or my parents or close friends and family members. And not when they ask for it, because something about people asking me to make them stuff just makes me not want to make it. But for the most part, I do enjoy knitting for other people. And that is a fairly recent development. At the beginning of my journey, that was not the case at all. But now I think more than ever, I have really enjoyed knitting gifts for people. I don't enjoy it as much as knitting things for myself, but I do enjoy it. I received a few opinions that sort of fit into themes. 
So I kind of grouped like with like, and I'll go through those. Pearling is fun. I don't know why people hate it. People complain too much about pearling, especially in garter stitch knit flap. I agree with this. Pearling is not as bad as people make it out to be. And this is another one where if I had done this very same video two years ago, I might have a different opinion on pearling. Um, when I first started knitting, I was a um, English style knitter. I was an English thrower. And the way I purled involved me completely taking my right hand off of the knitting needle to wrap the yarn around and push the stitch through. All around a bad time. <laughs> But now I am an English style flicker. I don't take either hand off to complete a stitch. Purling has become much more of a fluid motion for my hands. So I don't have the negative association with purling that I did when I first started knitting. But and I personally don't think it's that bad. So I would agree with these opinions. Charts are easier to read than written instructions and they specifically call out the wool and honey pattern by Andrea Mowry. I hate patterns that are only charted. So these are kind of two sides of the same coin. I would say that I agree with both of these. I find charts easier to read than written patterns, especially if it is a long pattern repeat. It's just easier for my eyes to follow a chart than it is to read it stitch by stitch in, in a written form. So I agree with that. And charts being the only, and patterns that only include chart and not written instructions, I agree. Actually, no, I don't agree with that. I think because I prefer reading from charts, I think it's sufficient for a chart to be the only way to, to sort of get through the pattern. I think it's a nice bonus if it's also written in case I want to verify one against the other. It's nice to have both just in case. Okay, and the next grouping is related to petite knit and European designers. The Euro girls are overrated, great patterns, but it's all the same pattern. <laughs> petite knit is overrated, I agree. <laughs> okay, even though I am wearing a petite knit pattern, by the way, this is the Friday tee and I modified for long sleeves by petite knit. So don't mistake me for a hypocrite by saying this. When I say petite knit and the petite knit like designer powerhouses, when I say that they are overrated, what I really mean I'm not saying that as a critique of the designer or their designs directly. I'm saying it more so as a critique and not even a critique, just as a comment on the knitters that go cuckoo for Cocoa Puss over their stuff as if they themselves single-handedly invented the craft of knitting and they were the first to ever do it and the best to ever do it. And that is just simply not true. <laughs> it's just not true. <laughs> but I think the hype surrounding their work is not really indicative of the work itself. I just feel like there's just too much hype. And I don't think it's entirely warranted. I mean, Petite Knit could release a design for a stockinette tube that you put on the leg of a sofa and all the girls would go crazy over it. It's like if I'm standing in a shop window and I see a chair and I think that is a great chair. Huh, that's a really cool chair. I might consider going in and buying it. And then a swarm of people notice it and everybody goes crazy. A riot breaks out. This is the best chair I've ever seen. I want this chair to marry me and have my babies. I want this chair to be the next president of the United States. This chair could solve world hunger. I bow at the feet of this chair. And meanwhile, I'm standing off to the side like, okay, it ain't that good. Y'all get on my nerves and I'm leaving. That is how I feel about Petite Knit. 
and My Favorite Things Knitwear and Andrea Mowry and, you know, insert overrated designer. That's just kind of how I feel. So it's not that I don't like their designs or that I don't think that their, their designs are good. It's just that I think people overplay it and it's annoying. And it puts me off of even wanting to knit their patterns. And so generally I stay clear of the petite knits and the My Favorite Things and the Andrea Mowrys. I don't follow them on Instagram. I don't subscribe to them on YouTube. I filter them out of my search results on Ravelry. Part of that is because when I'm scrolling on Instagram or I'm doing a, sil a filtered search on Ravelry and my results are um, sort of arranged by most popular, the entire first five pages of whatever search I'm gonna be doing is gonna be overrun with petite knit and my favorite things knitwear and it kind of drowns out everything else and my thing is they're always going to be there so if I catch wind of a pattern that they've designed that I like enough to make it and I feel like nobody else has done it in the hand knitting space then for sure I will make it and this is an example of that this this sweater I'm wearing is just, is an example of that. In general, they're not doing anything groundbreaking to make me go crazy over their latest release. I mean, and it's crazy because the hive mind is a thing. The hive mind is real. It is alive and well in the knitting community. Beware, okay? There have been so many instances where I'm perusing YouTube, trying to find new people to subscribe to, new content to consume. And I find a new knitting podcast and cool, great, let's get into it. And every single work in progress, every single finished object, every single project plan is from Petite Knit using knitting for olive, holding double with mohair and dusty or some other colorway. And it's just like, okay, next. Seen it, I see too much of it, I'm tired of seeing it. So that's how I feel about Petite Knit. And I feel the same way about Petite Knit that I do Taylor Swift and Beyonce. Just, they're, they're good. I'm not saying Petite Knit isn't good. I'm not saying Beyonce isn't good. I'm not saying Taylor Swift isn't good, but I am saying that people go crazy for it and I just feel like it's not that serious. Mohair, I have a couple of opinions about mohair. Mohair held with everything is a crime against fiber. Everything don't need no dang mohair. So I have to say I agree with this. I think I find mohair to be itchy and hot and not breathable. It's kind of soft to the touch by hand, but I, in a garment, I just find it uncomfortable. And something about the, the extreme fuzz kind of grosses me out a little bit, if I'm honest. And I do find it a little annoying how everyone is using it. Everyone is buying it. I mean, is it really that good? And it makes you wonder. And I've seen people that I subscribe to sort of share this sentiment of, I used to buy a lot of mohair and knit with a lot of mohair, but I found that I'm not wearing the pieces that I knit from mohair. And I'm starting to realize that, you know, I find it itchy, I find it hot, it's not the most practical fiber. And I was just playing into the hype. And this is one of those things where I feel like so many people who are just buying up all this mohair and knitting everything held double with mohair are playing into the hype without critically thinking about, okay, is, does this make sense for my climate? Do I enjoy the way this feels on my skin? Do I find this wearable? And I don't know if people are asking themselves that question. And I think if people did more often, then mohair would not be as popular as it is. But alas, that's not the world we live in and the hive mind is going to do what it does. Um, but I personally, I am not in team mohair. I have a couple of mohair pieces that I don't wear and that's just kind of how I feel. And the last category is about 
small circumference knitting. I usually prefer Magic Loop over 16 inch circulars. I agree with this. I prefer Magic Loop as well. It is my preferred way of knitting small circumference and I don't like the tiny circulars. They hate, hurt my hands. And then on the other side of this opinion, I have someone who said Magic Loop sucks. And in parentheses, they say, actually, it's a brilliant concept. I just don't like it. Fair, fair, but I don't agree with that. I think Magic Loop is great. And then the last on small circular knitting says, using DPNs is enjoyable. I don't agree with this one. I mean, I have found myself and on a couple occasions doing knitting with DPNs, but again, it's not my preferred way of small circular knitting. If I have a, all of the options in front of me, I'm always going to choose Magic Loop. And after that DPNs, after that small circulars, after that, whatever else there is that I haven't tried yet. So that's kind of my hierarchy of small circumference knitting. And, but to say DPNs is enjoyable. Okay, so those are all of the opinions I received. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone, but if I did, I'm not sorry. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.